Welcome back to the channel everybody. I hope everyone's having a great day. So the shop is a little bit cleaner. It's not the best, but the shop is clean. I haven't mentioned it, but I did get a storage unit. Hoping to bring a lot more stuff to the channel with that storage unit. So a lot of the stuff that was blocking my access and blocking my room in here is finally gone, which is a huge relief. Stay tuned. I'm sure in the upcoming videos you'll see, you'll actually get to see the new storage unit that we got. So today I got you in here because, if you didn't see behind me, I got Dirty D's heart removed. And uh, you can see why I call it Dirty D. Dirty D is my drift trike. And for those of y'all who don't know what my drift trike looks like, it looks like it's a little tore up at the moment, of course. We're going to be doing some mods to it, hopefully throughout this video. You'll get to see me somewhat overhaul the drift track engine. Now, this is the Predator 212. I'm sure a lot of you who are watching this who do small engine stuff knows exactly what I'm talking about. I know I said I was only going to put the exhaust on it and uh, that would be it. At the end of that video, I kind of got carried away and decided to do the intake and decided to do the valve springs. So the valve springs are done. They're upgraded to 18 pound. I believe the original are 10 pound valve springs. Intake's done with the new intake spacer and everything to put the actual new air breather on it. What I did to the exhaust was I had the exhaust cut and I actually pivoted it and I shortened it up to have a nice little rake coming off the back of the trike. So hopefully you'll be able to get to see that soon. It's just time to clean this thing up, overhaul, and I want to delete the governor. So as this thing spins a higher RPM, you have a little arm up in here. You probably can't see it, but that arm coordinates with inside the engine and cuts power on you. It's somewhat bypassed by this linkage that I've put on here because this thing kind of holds the throttle hard open. But you still fight the governor, so that's one thing I want to take care of while I'm in there. But the biggest thing that I'm doing today, I don't know if you saw it as we were kind of cruising around the shop here is this guy right here. This is the charging coil setup for a Predator 212 engine. It also comes with a flywheel ring gear. So if you want to put a starter, I don't think I'm going to put a starter because I really don't want to deal with the extra weight between the starter battery and wiring and switches and stuff. Uh, this guy right here is going to be real simple because all I have to do is ground whatever I'm trying to power, run one wire for power to this, and as soon as the engine's running, that thing starts charging. It will charge a 12 volt battery, I, I assume, but it will also power a light all by itself. But yeah, guys, so that's what I'm working on today. Uh, I know I've been having leaky carburetor issues, so I want to try to take care of that today. I plan to do a lot of stuff to the frame on the drift trike here real soon. Anyway, I hope you guys are enjoying the content. More with the drift trikes coming, but without further ado, let's go ahead and break into this guy, see what all is going on. Uh, get some of the stuff taken off and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and continue on. I've already got the uh, side cover off Got everything off of the engine. Now. We're gonna pull this old flywheel off After looking at it further inspection these are gonna work out pretty dang well They're gonna fit right there. I'm gonna be able to slide that new flywheel on the kit didn't come with bolts to be able to fasten these in. I don't know why. It's obvious that you're going to need them. These bolts right here for the cover, the actual cover that goes over everything, they're the same threads and I found that out by threading them in there. What I need to do is run down to the hardware store, get some that are the proper length, and then I can fasten these charging coils right up to it. So you can see, even though this block did not come with a charging setup, you can purchase it on the side. I got this one from Amazon. I think it was like 60 bucks. Once you do that, you'll have this extra wire sticking out. You can buy them in a single setup or a dual setup. I got the dual because I got a couple lights and stuff I really want to put on it. Hopefully with the whole COVID-19 Corona BS, I can still purchase this stuff. But yeah, so anyway, that's where I'm held up. Let me run to the hardware store. I'll be back in a minute. Good old Ace Hardware came in clutch. What I'm going to do is put a small dab of blue uh, Loctite. For those of y'all that don't know, blue Loctite is the way to go whenever you're putting something together that you want to get apart later. Looks like you're going to need inch and a quarter bolts. Uh, I don't remember the thread pitch on these. Sorry about that. But if you want, just take your engine cover bolt. Like I said, it's the same thread pitch. Just use that to match it up. When you're using blue Loctite on something like this, you don't want to just coat the hell out of it. You just want to put a couple small dabs on it. You don't need a whole lot. got our two charging coils on. What you want to do is make sure that this wire doesn't get in the way of anything. So I think I'm going to run it up like that. Okay, so I'm going to actually run it out right here in the middle. 
pull that bolt out, it gives you the option to actually move these down towards the center. There we go. So yeah, see the wires are nice and tucked back out of the way. That's the way to go right there. All right, so there it is. What you want to do is make sure your keyway is still intact. Okay, so because of the splines on the flywheel for the starter, you need to pull your coil off. Yeah, go ahead and pull your coil off, or at least loosen it up where you can wiggle it. I'm going to pull mine completely off. Once you pull your coil off, you'll be able to slide this guy off. I know the camera died on me at some point in recording that. I put a new battery in it. We got this guy all assembled. I had to take a nipple off of this fan in order for it to fit properly. That's what happens when you buy stuff online and you can't have it here to see what you're doing, see if it's gonna fit, if it's the exact match or not. Next thing I wanna look at is this governor. So there's a hundred different ways to get the governor out of there. See if I can't get it to focus, there we go. And my way I think it's gonna be the quickest and easiest is once you get this cover off your engine, what you wanna do is get you one of these, which is a governor remover tool, it's sized perfectly. And the reason why I'm going this route is because I don't wanna have to worry about plugging up this hole that's left behind, you can see it there. And I don't wanna have to worry about uh, having to build a new throttle assembly other than the one I had already made. So what you'll have to do is make sure, which I don't have the, uh, I don't have the spark plug in it right now, but make sure you turn this crank to where you get that opening. You saw that opening I just got rid of. Right there, you got a clear shot towards the governor. And what you're gonna do is take your bolt cutters in there, cut it just below those two little ears. Let's see if we can't hit that one on the, on the dead nut right there. All right, so I had to set the camera down because I'm a one man band today, but here's what you have left of the governor. And that's what you have left on the inside. So these are 14 inch bolt cutters and they get right up inside there, right through that little window, cut that dude off. You don't have to worry about plugging a hole. You don't have to worry about anything else, changing your throttle assembly, good to go. Now, the next step is just to pull the little gear out of the back there, which you'll just turn it a little bit more. Right there, you can see you got a clearing at the gear. All right, if you can see down on that shaft, there's a little ring that I've bent already. And I'm gonna have to set the camera down, but once you get that ring pulled, then you can slide the gear off. You can see it right there, I'm wiggling it. It's kind of hard to get to, but if you have, like what I have here, a small terminating screwdriver and a hammer, and you gotta have a nice thin head on it like that, you can get that in there and tap it with the screwdriver and bend that ring to where it'll pop out real easy, but it's kind of a test to get up in there. You can see what all you have to deal with. Three steps to getting your governor off. First one is cutting this guy like I did with the bolt cutters. Then you can pull this cap along with this washer off, step two. Step three is popping this ring, which isn't too hard to do, but it is kind of a task, especially if you don't have very very good light like I did. Once you get that ring off, you can rotate your engine to where you have a clear shot just like that and you'll be able to pull that sucker completely off and get that out of there. You don't want to leave it in there because then you're going to have rattling parts and stuff. So now that we got that taken care of, I'll be able to put the cam back in which fell out on me so I'm going to have to figure out how to time the cam properly and get it set back up right. But once I get that done, then I can put the casing back together, see all this stuff up, put some oil in it, fire it up, and see how that charging coil is doing. So putting the cam back in wasn't hard at all. My crankshaft has a little bit of buildup and rust on there, so the bearing doesn't want to come all the way off. If I had some emery cloth on hand, I could just hit that with a little bit of emery cloth and it would slide off. But what I did was I slid it back far enough. If you can see, there's a little tick mark on the edge of that crankshaft gear. And you want to line it up with the camshaft gear, and then you can stab the cam back in. Make sure that your cups for your, I guess your lifters, for your rocker arms, make sure those are pushed in all the way. That way they seat on the cam. You can look down in there, which probably still can't see with the camera, but you can look down in there and see it in there. So anyway, once you line that back up, you're clear to put your cover back on. So I'm going to go ahead, set this engine down on the side, make sure the cam doesn't move, make sure the crank lines up and get the cover back on it. Uh, probably just going to put a little bit of RTV on this gasket. That'll get it sealed back up and we can put oil in it. So as you can see, I got my crank case all cleaned up on the inside. I got my RTV on there. You have to make sure when you put it on, I typically use my finger to put it on or I'll cut a really small hole in the tip of the applicator. And you just want to run a nice thin line. You don't have to just gunk the hell out of it. I don't know why people are like that, why people do that. You just want it on there. You want to make sure you prep the surface. I got all the gasket off of there. And so all you got to do, put your RTV on there. 
and go ahead and put your crankcase cover back on. We're just going to set her on there nice and smooth like and give her nice even pressure and she'll be sealed up. Alright, so I had to take a brief little intermission there. I had an incident and I couldn't figure out why it didn't want to start. So, whenever the cam fell out, if you remember the lifter cups fell down inside the bottom of the engine, I put it all back together the way it's supposed to be put back together and it would not start for me. Well, it ended up being that whenever the cam fell out and the lifter cups fell down, one of the rocker arms actually came off. So, all I had to do, luckily I didn't have to pull the cover off again. All I had to do was pull the cap off of here reposition the uh, rocker arm I just spun the motor over a little bit until it had some slack and was able to pop it back on I had to compress the spring a little bit of course but I got it on there so yeah everything's all taken care of now that's the governor deleted I got the oil pressure switch deleted also I didn't really film that and all I did on the oil pressure switch was go ahead and smear some red silicone down into that hole I left the little rubber grommet and everything on the inside uh, but I pulled the old pressure switch completely out, which it's sitting right over here. So yeah, I pulled that guy completely out. Uh, it wasn't very hard. It doesn't take much to do. But what I wanted to show you before I end this video is the actual charging coil setup on the Predator engine. Uh, show you how it runs now that the governor's deleted, what the throttle response is like. It's ridiculous. It's real rapid. I can't wait to get it back on the trike. And show you how it works with the light. So I went ahead and just hardwired the light. So you have, if you saw whenever I put it back together, you had two charging coils inside. One coil does one and uh, you can use another coil or you can tag team it. And what that does is it gets rid of the flicker uh, or it cuts it down to where you don't see it as much really. But you can do that or you can do like what I did here and just have that one. So that's going to be the headlight for the trike on the charging coil right there. And uh, I'm thinking about pulling this guy apart and putting a switch on the inside of it. That way I can switch it on and off just by the side of the actual light itself. Hopefully I can find space in there to get the switch in. We'll see. Uh, but that's what I'm going to do at the end of this video. Once I get done with that, then I'm going to set the motor back on. You probably won't see that in video. Uh, I'm starting to run out of daylight, so I'm in a time crunch. But yeah, I'm going to fire this guy back up. Prove to you that it works without the oil pressure switch, without the governor and uh yeah let you see the light actually work and everything else like that all right here we go <laughs> this thing's got some mean torque right off the bat. It was kind of hard to hold it down, but anyway. So there it is, guys. That's the Predator 212. It, literally, I didn't even choke it. Single start, fired right up with the new plug and everything. Hi, Hi Ted. What you doing, Ted? Hey, did you hear a motor? Yeah? So, anyway. But that's it for today's video. Like I said, I'm going to get this uh, motor slapped back on the trike here pretty soon. Stage 1 kit's fully complete. Governor's deleted. Got the heavier valve spring, so this thing's ready to rip. I really would like to do something different with the fuel tank, but we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, guys, that's really all I got. If you liked today's video, make sure to hit the like button. Make sure to subscribe. And uh, I guess that's it. Rep 361 Texas, we're out.